people who work for social media companies that reviews the community reports. What report that you reviewed that you will never forget about? I worked for a company where a user told his friend in chat he was going to kill himself by jumping from a bridge in UK. The player reported this to police and police contacted us for IP address to go stop him. The next few days I checked his activity and chat logs and he was inactive. And then a few days later he was active again. Such relief. But I couldn't sleep well those few nights worried. Facebook. Instagram mod. Got a video on my rotation. Two little girls sitting out in a grassy area. Don't really remember much. But they were definitely between 6'10". I don't think they were much older or much younger. I don't remember if you could hear a guy giving them directions on what to do to each other or if it was just very obvious that they were receiving direction. Basically having them do feet stuff to each other tickling, licking, etc. It was very subtle, because I remember having to ask if I could mark it for child peon. We get dock points in our monthly score if we mark content incorrectly. It was obviously CP to me and it was obvious it would lead up to more. But guidelines are very black and white and content has to meet very specific criteria. However, this video was trying to be passed off as silly kids just playing with each other. I don't know how to explain it. It was just super creepy. I had one person say they were just being silly, but another supervisor sided with me and told her it was very obviously child peon. I ended up escalating the video for child peon. I don't know what happens after that since I think it goes to a company that deals with this content. Nothing explicitly happened in the video, but it was just so disturbing and made me wonder what situation these girls were in. Other than that, it was mostly people getting chopped up by cartels, prostitutes, guys getting fisted elbow deep, a guy chopping up his own dong, surgeons removing a giant dildo out of a guy's ass, people being dismembered after a car crash, guys killing each other, heads chopped off, more prostitutes, drugs, people trying to sell or buy exotic animals, more peeing, girls calling each other whores, people torturing and or slash killing animals. I worked the Latin American market. I hear it was much more dull on the North American side of the office across the hall. None of that stuff fazed me except for when children or animals were involved. Or when a video went viral of a Colombian woman taking her son and jumping off a bridge with him in a murder-suicide. I couldn't stand to look at that one either. Man, early Latin America internet is freaking wild. I remember some freaked up content being paired up with really itty metal. And internet was an obscure thing back then. Even surface level internet. Wild times. I remember back in the early 2000s during my e-bombs world, Newgrounds website visit days where someone mentioned a website that had the most fricked up videos on it. I was curious to see how fricked up these were. The site was filled with suicides, murders, and just gruesomely bloody videos. I got through two videos of suicide and murder before I couldn't do it anymore. I still wonder if that website exists. I really hope not. Oh wow! A thread tailor made for me. I spent the last two years working in content moderation and I'd say I handle it well. Though my short-term memory is really bad now and I'm led to believe that it's a symptom of PTSD. But I'm not gonna get into that. Anyway, to answer your question I'd say the jobs that stuck with me the most were ones that showed animal torture and then stayed on the animal. For instance, there was one video out there of this lady just casually chopping the leg of this dog off and toss it into a stew or something. But the video stays focused on this pool dog trying to come to grips with the fact it's missing its leg, trying to step on it, but it can't. Then it just kinda lays down and cries licking at the wound. That one is rough. The other one that comes to mind was a video of this guy being dismembered, limb by limb. Once his last leg was taken off they proceeded to beat his skull in with his own severed leg. He stopped wailing after a while, but he was whimpering throughout the whole thing. Those two stuck out to me, but there was a deluge of content of all varieties memes and jokes, and videos of all kinds day after day. I'd say 90% of the day you wouldn't see anything worse than you would scrolling the front page of Reddit. But every once in a while something happens in the world and every single person seems to have to be the one to put it up again and again. Like the Christchurch shooting. I watched that video probably a hundred times. I've seen it to do music. I've seen it with no Russian. I've seen it with a laugh track. I've seen it with a victory royale slapped on it. I've seen it all and know you aren't creative for putting it up there. Are you required to watch the whole thing? Surely you would be allowed to report it and move on after the first inkling of inappropriate content? Yeah I mean surely after the guy's missing one limb it's pretty freaking clear this is violent content? Not sure if it counts, but I was a mod for a subreddit related to true crime. We got a report about a guy asking really off questions. 
He was basically asking hypotheticals about what kinds of clues detectives would look for if his wife was murdered. He was saying that she ran on a trail that was dangerous, and if something happened to her, he would want to help with the investigation. Someone told him it seemed like he was planning to murder his wife and was soliciting advice to help cover his tracks. As soon as they said that he deleted all of his posts and account, we sent the reports up the chain, and I believe the super admins may have contacted the police. I never heard any follow-ups, so I'm not sure if it was a bad joke or what. It was really unsettling though, somewhat unrelated, but admins do contact police sometimes. I was going to run away from home when I was 13, so I posted about it on a form asking for a ride halfway across the country. Someone traced my IP address and contacted the police in my town. Next thing I know I'm getting called out of my room, because the sheriff is sitting in the living room with my parents. So yeah, I'd say they probably acted on that. How'd that work out for you long term? I'd imagine your parents were pissed, but hopefully something changed to improve your home life. My parents were more worried than anything. The forum I posted on was, basically encouraging unhealthy and downright dangerous habits for many people. That along with my very real intentions to run away got me lots of therapy. Eventually my parents divorced, but from the age of 13 this January it's been an uphill battle. I'm good now though. Imagine being the wife and seeing in the search history questions about how to murder you. I've worked for many a YouTube channel, the blacklist slash 4 miles, racial slurs everywhere, creepy it about literally any female on screen, never underestimate how moderated a large channel's comments are, sometimes it's someone's whole day. One thing that stuck in my brain was one account that was just like pure vitriol. You guys are a disgrace. You don't deserve to live. Kill yourselves and the like. Nothing particularly specific, but just hateful. So before banning this account from commenting I decide to click on it. It's a girl. Had to be like 13 14, and severely mentally disabled. I couldn't stop thinking about what this girl had been through to make her so angry and that she could only express it online. I'll never forget that it man. How many other of the YouTube commenters are just like, bullied or even abused kids with nowhere else to lash out? Oh god. I had a really similar experience about 6 years ago. I commented on a video, can't remember any of the context, and started getting harassed by someone in response to it. After a few days of being spammed by them I went on their page, profile, and saw they were commenting on video after video, harassing random people and saying the most disgusting things, telling people to kill themselves, using slurs here there and everywhere etc. I also saw that she was a girl in her early teens, whose only video was of her, looking very overweight and unkempt, smearing her it all over a bathroom wall in what appeared to be someone's home. I was aware that children smearing their feces is an indication of some kind of trauma response, mental illness, and given her online behavior I was convinced this was a very troubled child who needed help, not the online abuse she was. Understandably, getting in response to her comments, I sent her a message saying it seemed like she was having a hard time, that I wasn't angry with her, and I hoped she could find someone to talk to. She never replied, but she did stop harassing me. Sadly she continued to harass other people until her account disappeared a few weeks later. I still think about her. I had someone get mad at me in YouTube comments for a video where someone didn't know the name of a crystal they were using for a craft, and it was amethyst, a common quartz and basically the only cheap common purple crystal and I'm obsessed with it so that was a fast comment for me to make. Some freaking rando came up and left long comments tearing into me about being a know-it-all, then proceeded to go to my channel and leave horrible comments on videos of my pets and home movies I'd uploaded for family. I had to hide all my videos and block her to get her to stop. It was insane. She had an empty channel so I couldn't find any info on her. She must have been going through her own it. Yo, a few years ago, I made videos as a hobby. I made one about a video game, Star Citizen, and how the company behind the game was pretty sketchy and there were lots of conflicts of interest in the company's leadership structure. Basically a video about how investing in the game might not be wise. At the time people were spending thousands of dollars to support this game that hadn't, and still hasn't, even been released. Some dude went off on me. He made a new comment on the video every hour or so that was paragraphs long ripping into me. I asked him to stop. Then. It got really weird. He basically doxxed me, posted my full real name and address in the comments, threatened to kill my parents and actually assault my girlfriend at the time, also posted their full names and addresses. Thing was, the guy's account had his full name and it was obvious where he lived. So I just took screenshots of everything he said and emailed them to his local police department, called them too, 
told him I reported him to the authorities, and within a day the account was gone. My channel was sort of taking off at the time, but that one experience made me quit. Although I may pick it up again now to stay busy during isolation, there are way more deranged, violent people out there than most people think. I worked for an electric company as a secretary, somebody called my office, as the number to the office is on all of our company trucks, to report that one of our drivers was stopped at a park, playing a full-on pickup game of basketball during his work shift. I never said anything to anyone. I like that guy. I live in a small town where one kid was bullied by almost everyone, because he was raised by mentally unstable parents. He drove a work truck home for lunch and a neighbor called the company to let them know he had the truck at home. Jerk. Pool kid had such a rough life. Why do that? It was like they wanted him to fail. His dad is a paranoid schizophrenic and his mom is a hoarder. They lived in a bunker underground with dirt floors. But please, let's make sure the kid can't keep a job in town. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video please smash the like button and leave a comment which story you liked the most. Subscribe and hit the bell notification for updates on our latest videos. And don't forget to check the links in the description box for more awesome content.